Good morning, I'm Tianga Talaka from Monash University. I'll be talking about my package seal, and this package came out as a part of my PhD work. So in this package, we introduce a general framework for forecast model selection using the features of the time series. So we particularly focus on the large scale time series. Uh, let me give some motivation. This is one application where you get large collections of time series. Often, uh, businesses often want to forecast demand, sales, costs for, across, dif across different multiple products, across different warehouses. Further, technological companies like Google, Yahoo, they collect many millions of time series, such as web click logs, number of users for different services, web search accounts. So in order to forecast these time series, you need a fast automated procedure to generate forecast. So with that, I'm coming to the main objective of the study. So our main objective is to develop a framework that automates the selection of the most appropriate forecasting method for a given uh, time series by using an array of features computed from the time series. So the features, Tukey, uh, Tukey, John W. Tukey came up with the idea of features which he called cognostics. Several decades later, his concept was rediscovered and get used under different names. The, in machine learning literature, they call characteristics or features. Here I use the term features. The basic idea is you have a time series and you convert this time series into a vector of features. These features are measurable characteristics of the time series. So examples of time series features, strength of trend, strength of seasonality, lag one autocorrelation coefficient, spectral enthropy measures the forecastability of the time series. There are many other features that quantifies the various aspects of time series. In our study, we used 35 features. These are the features that we used. They include length, seasonal, strength of seasonality, measures to capture the linearity, curvature, stability, and some ACF and PACF-based features, unit root test statistic-based features are some of them. So, so this is the methodology. We call this framework feature-based forecast model selection forms. This consists two phases, offline phase and the online phase. During the offline phase of the algorithm, we train a classifier or a meta learner. And then in, when the online phase is activated, we calculate the features of the new time series and then pass it, it, it to the pre-trained classifier to identify the suitable forecasting method. First, I'll talk about the offline part of the algorithm. So in order to train an algorithm, we need to have a large collection of time series. We assume that we have essentially large population of time series, and then we take a sample of observed time series. In addition, in addition to the observed sample of time series, we have simulated time series. This is useful when you have a small sample to build a reliable classifier or when you want to add more or some types of time series in order to get the balanced sample. Once you have the observed sample and simulated time series, we call the whole thing the reference set. We split time series in the reference set into a training period and the test period. We calculate features based on the training period of each time series, and then we further we fit several models to uh, each and every time series and calculate the forecast error measure over the test set. Based on those calculate. Uh, Based on those forecast error measures, we identify the suitable best forecasting method. So for each time series, now I have a set of features as well as the best forecasting method. Now I pass this into a classifier. We use the random forest, uh, uh, classifier, a random forest algorithm to train the classifier. So when once when you have new time series, we quickly calculate the features of the time series and pass it into the pre-trained classifier and it will give the suitable forecasting method. 
So with that, I'm coming to the package. You can uh, download the package from my GitHub repository in order to give a sense of how this package works. I use data sets from M1 and M3 competitions. From the M1 competition, I use the yearly series of M1 competition, which consists of 181 series. And I use M yearly series of M3 competition as my new time series, which consists 645 time series. They are basically li list of time, time series. So input features, you can use the function cal features uh, to ca compute the features of each and every time series. Here I have a list of three time series. And then you can specify the database. If the time series comes from the M1 and M3 competition, you have to specify here M1 and M3. If it is come from something other than the M1 and M3 competition, here you have to specify the other. Then it will calculate the features based on the training part of the time series. Next, we need to identify class labels. For that, we need to fit several models to each and every time series. Here, again, I consider the three time series from M1 competition database, and I fit ARIMA, ETS, random walk, random walk with drift, theta, and neural net network models to each and every time series, and calculate the mean absolute scale error. So these are the mean absolute scaled error under each and every forecasting method. And here I use auto.arima function in the forecast package to identify the suitable ARIMA models. These are the ARIMA models selected by the auto.arima functions for, for these three time series. And again, I use the ETS function, which is the automated uh, exponential smoothing algorithm implemented in the forecast package to identify the suitable exponential smoothing models. Later, we classify the ARIMA models to as uh, ARIMA, ARMA, MAAR, uh, random walk, random walk with drift in, for the case of class label. Further, we classify the ETS models as ETS with trend component only, ETS with both trend and seasonal component only as our class labels. So the next function is the prepare training. So that means we, have, we need to have features as well as the class labels to train the classifier. So for that, we have to pass two arguments. One, one argument is the um, output of the if cast accuracy f function, and the second argument is the uh, uh, output of the cal features function. So once you pass those two arguments, it will give you the training set. So we have here the features, and the last variable here is the class labels. So once we build the reference set, now our task is to, is to train the classifier and generate uh, class labels for the new time series. So here I train the classifier based on the M1 data. I use a yearly series of M3 competition as my new time series. So here we can use the build RF function to train the random forest classifier and to generate and to identify the new, uh, cl new class labels for the new time series. Here the training set is the reference set we calculated from the previous function, and the test set is the features calculated on the yearly series of the M3 competition. Uh, we have tried uh, several random forests with few different specifications, and here I use the random forest with class priors, so I have to specify the what sort of random forest that I need to train a number of trees you have to specify and seed. And if you want the importance of the features, you can specify it here. So these are the uh, models selected by the, uh, selected by the random forest classifier for the first uh, 20 time series and the early series of M3 competition. For the first time series, it selected the ETS model with trend component. Uh, for the second time series, random walk with drift. Third, again, random walk with uh, drift. For the model here, uh, it selected the ARIMA model. Here, most of the labels are random walk with drift. If you have read the um, uh, 
M3 competition result uh, paper, you can see the yearly series of M3 competition are biased towards the random walk with drift model. So that's why we have uh, random walk with drift uh, selected by most of the time series. So once you select the models, we need to generate forecast. So we can use the function RF forecast. Here you have to pass the predict, uh, class labels from the previous uh, previous function. And here TS list is the, it's your training set of yearly series. And you have if, if it is, comes from the M1 and M3 competition, you have to specify here. If it is not, you have to specify other. Then it will automatically uh, identify the training and test periods of a time series. And if you select here accuracy true, it will calculate the forecast accuracy measure over the test set. Here I calculate the mean absolute scaled error. So the mean is for the point forecast. This is the a lower boundary for the 95% confidence interval, and this is for the uh, upper boundary of the 95% confidence. And these are the corresponding accuracy measures. So those are the main functions of the SEAL package, and I have mentioned in my framework, uh, if you have a small sample to build a reliable classifier, then you can augment the observed sample by simulating many more time series. So you can use the sim arima based function to simulate time series. Here I selected one series from the early series of M1 competition, and I further generate two more series based on the same arima based function. And if you want to generate, um, uh, sim if you want to simulate time series based on the ETS function, you can use the uh, uh, same ETS based. If you have time series with multiple seasonal components, you can simulate many more time series by using sim MSTL based uh, function. So this is one application. This is the results of one experiment we, uh, we run. You can find the results of the other experiments in our paper. I will, later on, I'll give the link to the paper. So in this case, I use M1 series as my observed sample. And new time series are from M3. And green dots represent the yearly uh, uh, the simulated time series. Here, I use principal component analysis projection to to, uh, to visualize the relation be uh, relationship between these three types of time series database. So I trained the classifier based on the, uh, uh, based on the black and the green dots, and it is evaluated based on the uh, orange the dots. So each time series, each, uh, each, each point in the, this graph represents the, uh, one single time series. So this is for the yearly time series, this is for the quarterly, and this is for the monthly time series. By, uh, by looking at this diagram, you can see by simulating the time series, we were able to expand the feature space of the time series as well as we were able to increase the evenness of the feature space. So next, uh, we evaluate our framework against uh, some benchmarks and other commonly used approaches of time series forecasting. Uh, in order to evaluate our framework, uh, we generate forecasts across, uh, across all horizons, and we rank our approach, uh, approach across all horizons, and we took the average ranking. So as you can see, the forms approach performed better than the other benchmarks and other commonly used approaches of forecasting. So to conclude, uh, we introduced a novel framework called FORMS Feature-Based Forecast Model Selection using meta-learning based on time series features. FORMS algorithm uses the knowledge of the past performance of candidate forecast model on a collection of time series in order to identify the best forecasting method for a new time series. For real-time forecasting, our framework involves only the calculation of features, the selection of forecasting methods based on forms random forest classifier, and the calculation of forecast from the chosen model. We have also introduced a simple set of time series features that are useful in identifying the best forecasting method. So that's bring my presentation to the end. You can download the package from the GitHub repository. This is the link to my paper. Thank you.
Thank you. Do you have any question? Yes. I think it's fine because these ARIMA models are, in, uh, uh, are selected based on the auto.arima functions in the forecast package. Default, I think, P, simple P, is for the auto.arima function is fine. So maximum uh, implemented in the auto.arima function is fine, but you can change, the, change, change those values. There's no restriction on it. No, they are different lengths. Um, um, in those training tests, M1, M3 competition, the training period doesn't contain any missing values in any of those time series, but if the missing, if the missing values are present, that won't be a big problem in this case because uh, uh, here we use the features of the time series. So if the features are not influenced by the missing value, that then it will not be a big problem. <laughs>